thank you for forgiveness. We thank you that we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you that there is a way to the Father from the dark paths of sin by the cross, Lord. Help us today, Lord. Uh, we pray you would open our eyes, you would soften our hearts, you would help us to walk more closely with you today. Amen. Abigail from Tribe has uh, very kindly agreed to read uh, the uh, Psalm of the, uh, of the week, uh, which is Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Thank you very much, Abigail, for reading those that psalm so beautifully. Um, we're going to spend a little time now um, uh, with some pictures um, looking at uh, this psalm, Psalm 100. Uh, it'll be short. There's only five verses uh, to look at this morning. And uh, I want to call this Six Reasons to Praise the Lord. Um, you'll see that there will be a little number appearing. Um, the, in this case, the first one is number six. Uh, and uh, as we go through, maybe some of you children uh, in tribe uh, and flame pads would like to actually just, just check what are those six things as we go through. And the clue will be the numbers. So first of all, in verse one, it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, this word joyful is the same word that was used as when the children of Israel were going around Jericho. Do you remember this huge city that, that, that stood between them and going into the promised land? And God said to them, go round six times. And then on the seventh day, the six days, the, the trumpets had been blown by the priests all those days. But on the final day, they had to do something else. It says here, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall flat. And that word shout there is the same word that is used here, make a joyful noise. Shout to the Lord. I don't know whether you've ever shouted to the Lord. Uh, I have, uh, and uh, I, I perhaps should have done more so. During this week, I found that uh, my heart was um, uh, feeling very weighed down. And um, I think this is a common experience for all of us. It certainly is uh, uh, for me. And I knew that I needed to get up. I needed to, to speak. I needed to sing. I needed to shout. And to be honest, I didn't really do that until early this morning. And maybe in this lockdown situation, you can't do much shouting. But the Bible says it's a good thing to make a joyful noise, even if it's a joyful grunt because of the people around you. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Verse 2 also tells us how to praise the Lord. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. You know, in our workplaces and in our schools, there is such a culture of complaining. You go to work and, oh, the weather, oh, the tube, oh, the boss, oh, the other people, oh, my children, my parents, so many things we complain about. It's a deep culture in our society. But we have to uh, be counterculture. And it says here, to, we should serve the Lord with gladness. Philippians 2 verse 14 says this. It says, do all things without complaining and arguing. So it's not just coming along on Sunday morning and praising and complaining all week. Something has to change in our lives too. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 says this. Work hard and cheerfully at all that you do, just as though you were working for the Lord. There's the thing, isn't it? You're the, the daily grind of work, working for the Lord. Do it cheerfully. Let's ask God for grace to do that. And then the third how here is come into his presence with singing. 
I've already spoken about that. Singing is a wonderful instrument to connect our mind, our soul, our body in the praise and the worship of God. But we've got to do it. And better to do it out loud than to always do it in your head. And then in verse 4, it tells us that we should enter his gates with two things we've talked about for these last few weeks. Thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise and david loved to do that there's a picture here of the tabernacle which is the tent and david could have chosen his palace he could have chosen all sorts of beautiful places but the place he loved most was the house of the lord and the courts around the very presence of god it didn't look very much but to him it was like gold he longed for the courts of the lord and what brought him in there were thanksgiving Now, we had some wonderful thanksgivings earlier from uh, those three families, all the things they were grateful for, whether it's the food on our table, whether it's the Xbox, whether it's our friends. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. It brings us into his presence. And then praise, we heard from Ablaze, the attributes of God. We heard from uh, Esli and we heard from Jonathan about the love of God. We heard um, about uh, the, actually Jonathan was about the forgiveness of God, wasn't it? And it was Peter was talking about the love of God and all the other wonderful attributes of God that the teenagers were sharing. So we praise him, not just for what he's done, but for who he is. And I want us to see these these six reasons why we should praise God. And the first one is to do with who he is. In verse three, it says, know that the Lord, he is God. So we praise him because he is God. It says we should acknowledge him in the version that Abigail read. But just know this. Do we understand that he is God? Do you remember when uh, Elijah, we heard from Mauricio last week, uh, had built that altar, poured water upon it, got all the uh, the uh, priests of Baal around, and then the fire had come down from heaven. And Elijah had said to them, the God who answers by fire, he is God. And the fire came. And what did they do? It says all the people fell face down and cried, the Lord, he is God. The two words that are used uh, for here, here for Lord and God are the two most common words for God in the Bible. Where you see Lord, capital L-O-R-D, it always is translated from Jehovah or Yahweh. It's the personal name of God. So Yahweh, he is God. And wherever you see capital G, O, little d, then that is Elohim. And that is the God who created the world. The definition uh, that you'll find in a concordance of Elohim, it says he is the supreme God. It is the plural of majesty. It's actually a plural word, but it's used in the present. It's like gods. He is gods, but he is God, Elohim. And it focuses, the concordance says, on his great power, on his creative power. This year was the 30th anniversary of the uh, invention, and the launching of the Hubble telescope. We started uh, with a few uh, faults going wrong, I remember 30 years ago, but they mended it, and since then it's been sending wonderful pictures of the universe back to Earth. And to celebrate this 30th anniversary last month in April, they released this picture here of the um, a red nebula, which is a cloud of gas and dust with its blue neighbor, which is part of a star forming uh, part of the universe, which is nicknamed the cosmic reef because the astronomers thought that it looked a bit like a kind of underwater reef, but it's made up of millions of stars. And this is 163,000 light years away from the earth. That means Uh, not just 163,000 miles away, but the time that it would take light to travel one year multiplied by 163,000. Do you know, just in our own galaxy, in the Milky Way, there are billions of stars, many of them bigger than our own star, the sun. Now, at the bottom of that picture, 
that the Hubble uh, organization sent their three credits to NASA, to ESA, and to STCL. So they get the credit for the picture. But wow, we should give the credit to the one who created it, to the God of the universe, to the God of wonders, who is so awesome. And we need to have this awe of God in our hearts. I love the throwaway sentence in Genesis 1 and, and verse 16. It just says, he made the stars also, as if it was nothing. He made the stars also. But the second reason to note why we should praise God, in verse, um, the next verse it says, it is he who made us. He didn't just make the universe, he made me. Even more wonderful, he made you and I. This week, I was uh, constructing a, a lean-to shed to put uh, a few old bags into uh, so that nobody would see them. And while I was doing that, I inadvertently uh, caught my thumb on a rose. And uh, I had three little cuts. You probably can't see them. They're so small now. But um, a lot of blood came out of them. Blood spurted out of them. But, you know, my body went into action straight away and several processes happened into my, in my body at that time. And we call this hemostasis, maybe hemostasis, depending how, how you like to say that word. And we're just going to show a very short video which explains that process to the wonder of that process in your body and mine. Usually, every time you have a cut or bruise, your blood clots to stop the bleeding. Clotting is a complex process, and there are four main things that make it possible. Platelets, or cell fragments. Clotting factors, which are special proteins. Fibrin, which is a protein mesh made up of a special kind of clotting factor. And finally, other cells, like red and white blood cells. Because clot formation is so important, platelets and clotting factors are always available, floating around in your blood. Now, let's talk about the four steps involved with forming a blood clot. When there is a tear in a blood vessel, the first thing that happens is that the nearby platelets are activated and become sticky. They start sticking to each other and to the sides of the hole in the blood vessel. For small holes, enough platelets usually stick together to form a temporary plug. But a platelet plug isn't strong enough to block the opening for long, so it must be reinforced with other materials. Otherwise, the blood flowing past the hole could wash the plug away. These other materials are called clotting factors. As the clotting factors float by the tear, they become activated or turned on and add themselves to the platelet plug. A special kind of clotting factor can weave itself together with others of the same kind and form a web of fibrous tissue, called fibrin. This web acts like glue and holds the platelets and the other clotting factors together, creating a blood clot. Other cells, like red and white blood cells, can also get caught in this web and help reinforce the clot. It quickly becomes stronger and starts to pull the edges of the hole in the blood vessel together. After the clot has formed, it stays in the hole until the tissue is repaired. When the clot is no longer needed, your body dissolves it. Now, even more wonderful than that process of hemostasis. You know, without that process, I would have bled to death. The blood would have just continued to gush out of my body. But that incredible process was there by my wonderful creator's design to stop blood flowing when it shouldn't do. But, you know, even more wonderful than the fact that God has made us um, is that we are his. It says in verses, verse 3 um, and 4, it says, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. What a wonderful thing that you actually belong to God. If we have put our trust in Jesus, if he has come into our heart and we have been born again, we have been born into a family <clears throat> and that we belong to God. And, you know, he has paid an incredible price for us. We are 
precious. We are a precious possession. Said in that song we just sung, we have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There is no higher price that could have been paid. And we are his. And belonging to him, he is a good shepherd. He cares for us. He leads us. He guides us. He protects us from our enemies. He anoints our heads with oil. He gives us places of rest. He's a wonderful shepherd because we are his. And then in verse five, we have the last three things. It says, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. You know, these are my uh, some of my three favorite words in the Bible. I've looked them up. I've gone to the to find the original of m- meaning of them. Uh, I meditate on them. I pray over them. I thank God for them over and over again. Firstly, he is good. Our God is a good God. Now, that might seem confusing sometimes when we see some of the terrible things that happen in the world and even sometimes terrible things that happen to us. But it never alters the fact that God is good. Creation was wonderful when he created it. Paradise will be fantastic when we come to it. And even in this life, if all we had was him and his presence, it would be good. But he leads us. He guides us. He protects us as a good shepherd. Secondly, his steadfast love. This uh, word in, in uh, uh, several versions is translated steadfast love. It always has the, it goes back to the same Hebrew word, which is actually hesed. And you can't really translate that easily into English, but it means a covenant love. The love of people who are in an agreement, David and Jonathan, a man and his wife, um, uh, different people, business relationships, uh, Abraham and God. They were covenant relationships and this special kind of love, this unbreakable love, God's covenant commitment to us is there. And I think that's fantastic. Whether we have badly behaved, poorly behaved, wonderfully behaved, we remain in that extraordinary covenant with God because of the blood of Jesus. And then finally, his faithfulness. Because of that covenant, God is faithful. When we pray for the things that are promised in the Bible, God is committed to keep them because he is faithful to his own word. He's a faithful God. He's good. He is steadfast. He is faithful. Just want to finish with a picture now that uh, my daughter Amy took up in uh, Bounds Green. Um, And interestingly enough, Joe pointed out to me this morning as they uh, put the camera out of their new upper room, and this beautiful rainbow is over that area. It's actually over the Stern household. It's over Livingstone Road. If you walked walked out over there, you'd probably find a a crock of gold there. Um, But she took this picture, and I just wanted to remind people that this rainbow God gave in the book of Genesis to Noah. Now, today it's being used um, as a a beautiful picture in so many thousands of windows of uh, God's kind of kindness through the NHS. But actually, God owns that. He created the rainbow and he gave us that rainbow as a sign of the covenant. In Genesis 9, verses 12 to 13, see if I can read this to you. I want you to think about this next time you see a rainbow. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, all the animals, all Michelle's animals, and for all future generations. I set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant. So whenever God sees the rain coming or allows the rain to come, you know, in those days, they'd, the only rain they had ever experienced had been the rain of the flood water. So rain for them actually was a terrible thing. And so God arranged that whenever the rain came with the sunshine, there would be that bow 
and they, they would remember that he would never again flood the earth. What a God we have. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you are a mighty God. We thank you that you are, your, your steadfast love is new every morning and that your faithfulness lasts forever. Lord, would you help us this week to trust you more? Would you help us to make a joyful noise of praise and thanksgiving to your name? Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you'll remember that when uh, the rain comes again and the next time you see a rainbow uh, that that God put his copyright on that. It's his. <laughs>